Hey gang, welcome back to another video. This week, I want to help to further expand your skill set by sharing my approach to basic 3D modeling. Now, before you say this isn't for me or it's going to be too complicated, I think these methods will simplify the process and help you to gain some much needed confidence with your 3D modeling skills. Now, I'll be using Fusion 360, which is available free for personal use. So if you want to follow along with me, you can download the software now and take it step by step. Go ahead, I'll wait. A few moments later. All set? Let's get into it. Before starting this model, I tracked down an image of an Obi-Wan Kenobi style lightsaber that had minimal distortion, and used the Insert tool to add it into Fusion 360 as a canvas on the XY axis. This will allow me to see it as a faint image within my design window so that I can reference its dimensions during my modeling. And speaking of dimensions, I need to set the scale of this image. So I right clicked on the image from the canvas folder in my browser window and selected calibrate. This will allow me to set two points within my image and define the distance between them. And once I hit enter, my canvas image automatically scaled to that dimension. With that out of the way, I wanted to draw a center line since this model is essentially a cylinder with some details and I wanted to ensure that my placement of the canvas image was centered. So I clicked Create Sketch from the top menu, selected the XY axis, which is where I wanted the line to be drawn, and then chose the Line tool to create my line. Then I could add my start and end points, and my center line was in position. Since I noticed my image wasn't quite centered, I clicked on the canvas and selected the Move Copy option and nudged it until it looked visually centered. The next part of the process is going to be about determining loose dimensions. I say loose because this image isn't very sharp, and because we're recreating something made from real-world objects, there's bound to be some inaccuracies from just using the photo. So once again I selected the Create Sketch button, placed my sketch on the XY axis, and chose the Line tool and started to draw in lines to determine the width and height of the various sections of the lightsaber. I like to keep a notebook nearby to jot down these dimensions along with some rough sketches so that I can collect all of the information in one place and refer back to it later. Now that I've got all the dimensions for the top section, I'm going to select Construct to create an offset plane, which makes a secondary platform for me to reference off of and will allow me to model from the top down rather than the bottom up. This isn't always the case, but for this model it's a good use of this function. You'll see what I mean in a second. With the first few dimensions figured out, I'll click Create Sketch from the top menu bar and select the offset plane I just added as my surface. But this time I'll select the Circle tool and will place the center of my circle at the center of my origin point, and then can drag outward to create the sketch. You'll also notice there's a small text box. This will allow you to add a specific dimension to your sketch, and so I entered the dimensions I wrote down in my notebook, and then created all of the sketches I'll need for this part of the model. When all of the circles were drawn, I could change my view of the sketches and begin to turn each 2D sketch into a 3D body using the extrude function. I'll click to select the inside area of the sketches that I want to turn into a body, and then press the E key or the extrude button at the top left in the menu and drag the arrow up or down. Or you can use the text box to type in the specific dimension that you need. For this second circle, I'll need to extrude through an existing body. So first make sure that New Body is selected in the Operations section of the pop-up menu in the upper right of your window, otherwise the extrusion will remove that segment from the model. This lower section has a slight bevel at the bottom, so to add that detail I'm going to select the bottom edge of that section, then from the Modify menu I'll choose Chamfer. Then I can use the arrows to determine how much or how little of a bevel I want on that edge. When the profile looks right, I can hit OK to set the feature in place. So far so good, right? The next part is even easier. To create the stem section I'm going to do it a little differently. Rather than creating individual cylinders, I'm going to draw half of the lightsaber profile and then revolve it around my center line. 
Once again, I'll select Create Sketch and the XY axis to draw my sketch on. And with the Line tool, I'll create a new sketch following the profile of the section of the lightsaber. When I have my profile sketch drawn, I can click inside the sketch to select it, and then I need to revolve it. So I'll switch to the Solids menu and choose Revolve. A small menu will pop up that lets me choose what to revolve and on what axis. In this case, I'll choose the line that I created at the beginning, and automatically the profile sketch will revolve 360 degrees to create the next element of our model. You'll notice this new body is red. That's because the program thinks we want to use this body to cut a shape out of our first section. In this case, we don't. So before hitting OK, we'll want to check the pop-up menu on the right and choose New Body from the Operation dropdown, and that will turn this part into a new independent 3D body. Now we've got our first two sections knocked out and can move on to the middle grip area. I'll be doing the same steps for this section as I did in the previous. But rather than create the same angled profile seven times, I'll create a copy. There's a few different ways you can create a copy. The easiest being to right click on the body I just created and choose Move Copy. But that only makes one copy at a time. But if I select my body, I can then go into the Solids menu and from the drop-down, choose Pattern, Pattern on a Path. This will allow me to create multiple instances of the selected object along the path of my choosing. In this case, it will be our original center line, which I'll choose from the pop-up menu on the right. Then I'll enter the quantity of copies in the pop-up menu and drag the arrow down to the bottom of the section on the canvas image until the spacing matches up with the photo and then click OK. That's three sections down, three more to go. Our next piece is a simple cylinder, but rather than create an offset plane for this, I'm going to select the bottom of the previous section as my sketch plane, then click Create Sketch, and we'll use the Circle tool to create the sketch based on my dimensions. Then I can extrude it to match the height from my canvas image and select New Body from the pop-up menu on the right to finalize the shape. There's a small step detail on this piece, so I'll add a slightly smaller circle sketch to the top of my cylinder and select the area between my new sketch and the outside edge of the previous one. Then I can extrude it by dragging the arrow down to create the step, making sure that Cut is selected from the Operation pop-up menu. I'll do the same order of operations for the second to last cylinder, but because it's got fins, I'll need to add them as an additional sketch. So I select Create Sketch, and with the Rectangle tool, I create a small box that will then get extruded to the same height as the cylinder. Then I'll select each vertical edge and use the Chamfer tool with the type set to 2 distance to give a slight bevel and specify its angle to create the fin profile. Once I've got the fin looking how I like, I'll go back to the Solid menu and select the Pattern tool to create copies of this shape. But rather than the Pattern on Path option, I'll choose Circular Pattern, which will allow me to reference my center line, and I can specify the quantity to create 12 copies of the fin in a circle around the perimeter of my cylinder. The last piece of the lightsaber will be made much the same way by using the bottom of the previous body for the sketch plane to create the circle sketch, and then extrude the sketch to match the height of this piece in the photo. For the detail around the outside, I'll create a new sketch on the XY axis, and with the line tool we'll draw a profile sketch which will then get revolved around our original center line. To add the fin detail this time around, I'm going to create a new sketch using the top of this segment as my sketch plane, and with the line tool we'll draw out half of the part I want to remove. Then I can select the mirror function, 
and using the x-axis can create a mirrored copy of my sketch. With my sketch completed, I can click to select it and use the circular pattern function to replicate the sketch using the center line as the axis. Then I'll select all of the copies and using the extrude function, I can drag the extrusion through my model to cut it away. At this point, I felt like the shape of the cut wasn't quite right. So I right clicked on the sketch in my model history along the bottom edge of the screen and selected Edit Sketch, then made adjustments to the sketch, which updates all of the copies as well, until I was happy with how it looked and clicked Finish Sketch. This change is also reflected in the extrusion I had already made, and so I can move on to adding the final details. The final details were created using all of the same techniques, creating new bodies from sketches by adding to or subtracting from shapes, and after a bit more work, my lightsaber model was complete. So there you have it. This is my method for nearly all of my 3D modeling projects. And while this video just barely scratched the surface of what this software is capable of, I hope it helped to demystify the process. And if you followed along at home, gave you a bit more confidence in your 3D modeling skills. Well, that's gonna do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something.